Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast. CF mutations, others such as R117H. This webcast is hosted by the foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the CF Foundation. To learn more about CF research, genetics, lung health, nutrition, and how to avoid germs, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. Peter Mogazel, who is the Center Director for the CF Care Center at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland. He's going to help you understand how this mutation causes cystic fibrosis. Welcome, Peter. Well, thank you for having me, Leslie. Before we talk about this specific mutation, I'd like to talk to you about how cystic fibrosis affects the body. CFTR is caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene, which encodes for a chloride transporter that sits at the surface of cells. When it's defective, there's abnormal salt and water transport in and out of cells, which affects mucus wherever your body makes mucus. In the lungs, this thick, sticky mucus blocks the small airways and allows bacteria that we all breathe in to become trapped in the airways. This leads to inflammation and airway damage. It also affects the sinuses, where that same mucus leads to recurrent infections. In the sweat duct, sodium and chloride are not reabsorbed, so that the amount of salt in the sweat is elevated. And this is used as a diagnostic test for cystic fibrosis. The GI tract, comprised of pancreas, intestines, and liver, are also affected in CF. About 80% of patients with cystic fibrosis will have pancreatic insufficiency because the small ducts in the pancreas are blocked and destroyed, and pancreatic enzymes are not produced to digest food. Severe liver disease can occur in a small percentage of patients with cystic fibrosis as well. Finally, there can be male infertility. This is caused by absence of the vas deferens, which is similar to having a vasectomy. Before we go on to talk about the specific mutation, I'd like to focus in, on the lungs in a little bit more depth. I have a video to show you which has what we call mucociliary clearance, which is clearance of the mucus out of the airway by cilia that line the surface epithelium. Here you see the normal airway with normal cells beating and moving mucus out of the airway. Now in the cystic fibrosis airway, the mucus is thick and sticky and actually smushes the airway epithelial cell in the cilia. This is caused by abnormal chloride transport, which is shown here in CFTR in yellow, which isn't transporting any chloride, and excessive sodium reabsorption, which is shown here in green. This is the problem in the airway that leads to airway inflammation, infection, and damage. Well, Peter, what about some of the other mutations that may be more unusual? Leslie, the more unusual mutations are typically splicing mutations, where CFTR is made and gets to the cell surface but there just isn't enough of it there. Therefore, you don't get normal chloride transport. The other kind of mutation is a conductance mutation. Here, CFTR protein is made and gets to the surface, but it doesn't conduct the normal amount of chloride. And again, that leads to cystic fibrosis. In both of these cases, there is some residual chloride transport present. So patients with either conductance or splicing mutations typically have milder symptoms. For example, they may be pancreatic sufficient and not need to take pancreatic enzymes. One conductance mutation which is common is R117H. This is a mutation that leads to CFTR reaching the cell surface, but it doesn't function normally. Here you see CFTR at the cell surface. You see chloride going through CFTR, but not the normal amount. You could envision a therapy with a potentiator that actually activates the CFTR molecule and allow chloride transport to be restored to normal levels. This would have dramatic effect on symptoms. Leslie, I hope this has been helpful in explaining conductance and splicing mutations, which are a little bit less common in cystic fibrosis. Thank you, Peter. Very much appreciate trying to help the community understand this mutation. I encourage you to talk with your CF Care Center to learn what your or your child's mutations are. You can learn more about CF research and the drug development for specific mutations on the Foundation's website under Quick Links, click Drug Development Pipeline. This concludes the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast on CF mutations. I would like to thank you for watching, Peter for explaining this mutation, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, 
Genentech for their unrestricted educational grant, and the SIA Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.